I wanted to do a little review today. So if we have a number, let's say 479, four one hundreds, ten, the, there are seven tens and nine ones. Okay, and if we want to add that, and I just do, remember we can use a domino or a playing card or um, a number cube, a die, you can um, pick any number. So if we add those up, we need to make sure that everything stays lined up. That's extremely important, okay? So I'm gonna start with the ones place first and I'm gonna add nine plus three. So nine, uh, 10, 11, 12. Write down the ones and I carry the tens because the number 12, okay? I'm gonna bring the one ten that I have up here. So plus one. Seven plus six. If I go ahead and add this one to this, it'd be seven plus seven, which is a double. So I can do 14. Write the four tens that I have here and carry the 10 tens up here. Okay, so the one set of tens, one set of extra tens would equal 10 tens. What is 10 tens? It's a hundred, right? So I'm gonna put it over here because that's 10 tens is a hundred. So plus one, write the one, carry the one. Four plus one plus three, I can do doubles again. I can do one plus three, and that's four. Four plus four is eight. And then I have 800, 42, which is eight one hundreds, four tens, and two ones. Okay, now to check my work, I can, um, I'm gonna check my work over here in this workspace. So how I check work is I can um, subtract, because remember addition and subtraction work together. So now I can take this 842 and I can work, kind of work my way back up. So I can take my total, let's say I had 479 coins in a game that I like, and I added 363 coins, I got 842, but I want to see if I got that number right. So I take the 842 that I have all together, and if I take away either one of these numbers, I'm going to get the other number, if I did my work right. So usually we, what um, we do is just take away that one that's closest. So I would do 842, and I'm gonna do the opposite thing. So 842 minus 363. If I did it correctly, then this will be my answer to the subtraction problem. And if you look, this would just be like our fact family, 842, 363 again if I added it right and 479 so we've been using smaller numbers but we can do it with bigger numbers and we can do it with addition or subtraction addition and subtraction or multiplication and division okay so again if 363 plus 479 does equal 842 then 842 minus 363 equals 479 842 minus 479 would be 363, so let's check it out and see how we did. All right. Oh my goodness. I can't take away three from two. I'm gonna have to borrow from the neighbor. If the subtrahend is greater, borrow from the neighbor. So I'm going to take a set of tens away and move it over here. So it'd be 12 ones now, because I had 10 ones plus two ones equals 12. 12 minus three is nine. And if you need to right now, we, the goal is to not count on your fingers, but right now if you need to, that would just be like using our base 10 blocks in class. Okay, and um, six from three. If I have three, can I take away six? 
No. So the subtrahend is greater, so I'm going to borrow from the neighbor. Okay, so that's 7. Um, so I took away a set of hundreds and I'm going to move it over and I can just put it right here next to it. So now I have 13 tens. So 13 tens minus 6 tens. Hmm. It's really close to a double. I know it's going to be 7. Okay, because 6 plus 6 is 12. So one more would be 7. 7 minus 3 is 4. And again, you can take this back. Oh, did we get it, get it right? Yes, we did. 479, 479. We got it right. Uh, so we double checked our work. We know that all of our fact family numbers all work together down here. And um, you can also use draw out all the base 10 blocks. That is, you can rewind this video and you can try it on your own, on your own piece of paper and write down the base 10 blocks. Um, you can also make up new problems and do fact family problems and see how you do with those. Um, you can even know the answer ahead of time and try that work and do it that way. So that way you can practice and you know you have the right work. Um, and you can practice that way too. So that's kind of like when, I, <laughs> when I'm reading a new story, I actually like knowing the end of the story ahead of time because usually it helps me read a little faster and know what's gonna happen. Uh, so if you're ever reading a book and that's you because you're having a hard time getting in, see what the end of the story is going to be if that doesn't bother you to be surprised. All right, so let's practice. I'm just going to pick a random, oh, of course I did 22 there. And I would have to do, okay, so we'll do 10, 22. So the hour of 10, I'm going to have to put this it can't be to 11 yet if I'm gonna put the hour of 10 here, okay? And it's not quite halfway between 10 and 12 because 22 isn't halfway past the hour. Do you know what halfway past the hour would be? You said 30, you are correct. Okay, so now I'm gonna move my minute hand to show 22. And remember on that little video from yesterday, it was five, 10, 15, 20, 21, 22. So I have 10, 22. I know what I have.